Alan Thomas, Scottish Boxing News here with David Brophy. David, how are we doing today? Good mate, good mate, thanks. Right. Um, sort of just recovering from your eye up. You yep, um, it's been a while to be fair, but um, it was an ongoing thing for a few years, but um, just progressed, progressed to get worse. But, um, so we got it fixed, so it's just a bit, it's still a bit iffy job training, so I go see the specialist at the end of this month. The way it's been doing and get back to business. Yeah. What was it? It was sort of wrong with it? My muscles bind the eyes, just for having to get hits in the head over the years, or muscles bind my eyes. So eventually, my eyes more or less became pock eyed and like I would double vision, I'd see double vision. But um, like see my last fight and stuff like that, I could see perfect, there was nothing to do with that. It was just an ongoing thing, and eventually it just became too much, you know what I mean? And, um, but I could see fine in the fight, so it's not an excuse or anything. It's, Is it sore or anything still? Um, no, there was no pain, it was just, as, as I say, everything was just double vision. If I, if I had it before, I would sit here, I would see four of you. you know, I mean, I couldn't do pads, couldn't hit a bag, it was, it was crazy. So obviously running, I had to wear a special glass even with a prism in it. So going running, they're steaming up, so it was just no training. So it was a, it was a hard, hard point for us, you know what I mean? So yeah. it was no training, no nothing. So glad to get it fixed and see my bit better. Ah, is it fine now then, yeah? It's, it's fine looking straight ahead. Uh, it's still a, bit, a wee bit crazy during training, but... Um, the doctors, the surgeons say they could take up to a year to settle down, but it's a year I haven't got. So, but yeah. um, I come back and see them, and they've been great ways the, the hospital to be fair. Um, they're doing everything they possibly can, obviously, in my circumstances. So, yeah, hopefully. Assuming with your like medical and stuff, uh, that. Uh, they should be always to say if a surgeon, if it's good enough for the surgeon, then it'll be, it'll be fine. As I say, but an eye test, I would, I would breeze through that. It's just a general moving about, moving my head. And, if, if it's going to happen again, I'm not that's the worth not the question. Um, it's obviously last year that you're last out in the ring. Yeah. yeah. Um, have have you been sort of since that um, that fight with Rocky? As I say, it, was, it was a hard one. It was a hard one for me to take. But it's never a night I go to bed, and there's never a morning I don't wake up thinking about it. But I say it's it's what it is. Rocky done his job. Um, I say there's no excuse for me, but I can see perfectly in the fight. I just get caught early, and I get caught early for something we worked on. Which is really agonisingly for me and Billy, but um, Rocky done his job and he, and he had a clinical finish, you know what I mean? So it's just something I need to love it, I need to get back up. And the best thing I could have done is get back in the next straight away. And then that, that power was took away from me from this eye stuff. So um, just need to get over it. This is life, it's boxing, boxing is a sport. Um, there's a lot worse things happening in the world, so just need to pick it up. On it. Yeah, I think you sort of said similar stuff to when you lost to like George Grove as well. Yeah. Like I've yeah. kind of focusing on the negatives. Here. You obviously have won a lot yeah. of fights, but yeah. um, uh, there may be something that people remember more. I don't know I if that's something that's fair. I think it's just a bit of shame. It's like my fights, like my fight was I've done, nobody really seen it. It's only two defeats in Sky, um, which was they were, they were bad defeats, you know what I mean? But as I always said, like I've never ever said no to a fight in my life. George Rose I was ready for, I knew I was ready for, but I still wouldn't say no. And if I if I got offered that game and no money, I would do I would do it again. I'm always for the money and that. So I think boxing again, you need to gain experience. And for me, for me, for, for taking that fight and for that arena, it's it's only going to gain experience. And I, and I think I took a lot of positives from it because I went to Australia in the Lions Den. I mean, you're, you go to Australia, it's harder to go to America. Yeah. To get a decision, so I've never said no to a fight, I never will say no to a fight. But just maybe maybe I should maybe think about whether the ones I pick pick in the future. Yeah. Um with that Zach Dunn obviously that was sort of your your, your big sort of breakout yeah. fight. Um yeah. I guess a lot of people sort of outside yeah. boxing back against you, but yeah. I guess in your camp you're pretty confident that you could come away yeah, with it. Just um, as I say, I am confident every fight. Um, but when I went over there and I seen when we were over to Australia and it was, it was hard, it was hard going to Australia and I was starting to treat, treat it a bit bad and I'm not bad but um, the promoter Brian and I told him he was, he was brilliant with us but exactly on his team were being a bit of assholes and I mean, not picking up the training so we just done it with myself and it was good, I worked out great, a great trip but there was no way I was going to do that trip and getting beat. I couldn't have, I couldn't have done that trip back yeah. without that belt, you know what I mean? So, um, I think that was just the, the hunger in the belly. The, the, I couldn't, I couldn't do that trip home yeah. without that belt. So, and I think in the first round you seen that, you seen that, but how much it meant to me. And after the growth stuff and that, then I really needed that. Yeah. Um, to get to get back up there. Um, I think you said that you're swapping down to to middleweight. For your, I, was, well, I was thinking about that. Um, I've done middleweight before. But it's, I do feel as if I'm a bit bigger and a bit stronger and a bit older, you know what I mean? So, but we're going to see how it goes. Um, I say that now, I'm never really in bad shape, but I won't be a bit heavier now. Um, 
if we can do it safely, we do it healthily, then we'll do that. So we've got these baby steps towards that, not just crash dying and crash uh, weight cut. So we'll do that safely and uh, hopefully, because I think I could do I could do well at middleweight. Um, so I think it's about open as well. Um, so hopefully, uh, hopefully everything goes well, everything goes well with the eye and get, get training and get some proper sparring. That's, that's the deal with the real weight loss happens or the real weight comes off. Yeah. So hopefully we get that sorted. Um, you obviously weren't like doing badly at super middleweight. Like, um, how come do you want to change? Is it just um, just the opposition, or is it more like no, a personal I th- thing? I think it's I think it's just more open. Um, and I say that last fight was a bit of sickness for me. It just um, I mean, Rock Rock's a good fight. I like Rocky. I, I sparred with him before the Australia fight. You know what I mean? But he's a big lad, a very big lad. Um, even though I put a lot of weight on during that fight, it's just a bit small. I've got a lot of weight, of weight in my legs. So physically, if you're in the ring, you look a bit smaller, you know what I mean? Because nobody looks at legs off at waist up. Yeah. Um, so we're just thinking about that, maybe take, try and get some muscle off our legs. And then I'd be, I'd be a bigger, a bigger um, person in the ring at middleweight, you know what I mean? A bit, bit more, a bit more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, demand, demanding in front of somebody, you know what I mean? A bit more aggressive looking, so um, I'm thinking it's just, just ideas now to get something back on you're back in the line, so um, we'll, we'll take it step by step with that stuff. Have you found it sort of maybe ha- not having the spotlight on you as much over this sort of last like <sighs> nine the, months? The spot, I see the fair spot, it's never really been on me to be honest. Yeah. You know what I mean, um, like say the fight with Australia and that, if it was, in, if it was somewhere in England, they would be everywhere. I, mean, it's, I thought it was quite a big deal, but um, obviously it's been Scottish, I'm not used to the line, and I don't expect it, I don't really bother about it too much of that. Um, I just, I just ran your back and uh, work harder with the fights, getting regular fights and and uh, making making income as well. You know what I mean? So that's 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 to me what this is all about. You know I mean, I'm getting older now. I'm 28 on Saturday there, so I know it's still young, but it's uh, the years creep up creep up on you. So you want to make what you can out of this and get out of it safely. Do you have a job sort of outside of this? Yeah, I've got a personal training business and uh, this gym we run it with classes and stuff like that. So. I think things have been a lot worse for me, you know what I mean, with this injury stuff, a lot of boxers, they just rely on income from Boston, so I never get that at the back of the building site. I, th- I find myself very lucky I haven't got that, and I've got a job I like um, through fitness and through boxing, what I've done in boxing, so I count myself lucky for that, but I know I still rather be boxing. Yeah, I was going to say, does that take your mind off it at all, yeah. but I guess not, not nah, especially now. Nah. Nah, it makes it worse, it makes it worse, obviously, and here you see the stuff, but I'm still training, I mean, the hunger's still there, there's, there's never been a time where I've thought about it. You know, I, mean, I just really wanted to, uh, to get this eye fixed and it was, it was a bad time for this eye but now it's, it's a little bit more positive. Yeah, you said earlier on that you sort of didn't want to, you thought about it every single day, that um, loss, but yeah. never thought about chucking it, never? No, no, it's, it's, I think, um, no, I've never thought about chucking it, it's never, um, I never kind of felt sorry for yourself, sport it doesn't let you allow you to feel sorry for yourself, first time you feel sorry for yourself, you'll always do it again, after every uh, Every maybe bad time in the sport, and there's going to be plenty of up and downs, you know what I mean? So, I thought about every night, every single night, every morning, every time you're in here, you think about it, but for the for the positive reasons, like to get you back, back in winning ways, and that, not, not leave that, it's, it's your last day, uh, your last fight. Yeah. That'd be, the, that'd be a disaster. Yeah. Um, you said never really had any sort of big media coverage up here. What do you think sort of is missing from Scottish know. boxing at all? I don't, I don't know. Um, I seem, I seem to see other people uh, get more than me, you know what I mean? But it's maybe, I, I count it my fault, my fault as well. But some, I get some papers that for me, I don't really, I really get back to them. You know what I mean? That's maybe my fault. But um, I, don't really, I don't really bother with that side of it. I mean, it's no, I don't do it to make him deal happy by, by myself. And, and like, as I say, it's, it's a job at the end of the day. That's, you know I mean, you need to have the passion for the sport, but it's a job. So um, maybe that's maybe that's a downfall, but that's just the way I think about it. I guess sort of like the higher end stuff you see, all the Dante Wilder and Anthony Joshua yeah. circus. It's sort of it's it's just I don't know if it's an act after time or if it's like boxing's a business at the end of the day. Yeah. I mean, these these people are just bigger names. They're better known than us. I mean, we're never going to get the coverage we're, we're, we're due for any fights. Like this. I mean, um, like the, the done fight, you've never got to get coverage for that, not one paper robber or not one anything like that, so how do people know? I mean, it's just, it's just having a clue. If it was England, if it was England, then I think it would be different. Or the matching fighter, then it would be different. I mean, you're sitting over there at the Lions Den, and you just got absolutely nothing for it, but I don't expect it. For when you do expect it, you'll be more disappointed, I think.
Do you think that's just like sort of less media and less sort of money in the, in the sport up here, or like? Um, up here, well, the, the TV coverage pay bigger, bigger wages. I mean, if a TV up here, you get paid more. Small hall shows, all due respect, it's what, it's what keep the British ball from going. But you don't get paid well for them, you know what I mean? Um, so, I mean, there's some boxers that must, must be working as well, you know what I mean? Working on balance rates and stuff like that. And loads of them, you know what I mean? So, for them, eh, take time out of their camps and go away for camps and um, and about the some end to them, an injury or end to them and you don't get paid. It's, it's, it's hard, it's a hard sport, especially you know, especially up here I think in Scotland, it's a very, very hard sport. But have got plenty of small hall shows, but small hall shows don't, don't keep you alive. Yeah, um, I was just thinking as an example actually Joe Ham I think took six weeks off his work for his uh, Celtic title shot. Yeah, definitely, you know what I mean, it's, these are the kind of things, so how do you make an income? Yeah. You know, I mean, sponsors are great. If you've got sponsors, then they really keep you breathing. You know what I mean? Sometimes, I mean, um, they don't understand how much they mean. To, mean to some boxers, but um, some people don't have them. Some people are not. I don't know. They just don't know enough people. But it's just it's, it's things are things are tight for everybody um, in Scotland or, or, or Britain or whatever else. Yeah, I guess because quite a lot of um, people. Maybe don't realise all the costs of like the medicals and for travelling for sparring and all that. And it's the food and for, for you just live day to day, you know what I mean? It's, it's expensive to be a boxer. Yeah. It's sore as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, there was obviously an MTK show announced in no, end of August, I think, for yeah. the Emirates. For the Emirates, yeah. Um, I spoke to my management and my management talked to me about that show, so if all goes well, get the head down, knuckle down for that. Um, so that's it's good to have a date in mind, you know what I mean? When, a few months ago, it was, it was just didn't know what was going to happen. There was going to be another fight. There was going to be another date. So now it changes the changes the full aspect of the way you think when you've got a date, with training wise and eating and doing what you need to do. So hopefully everything goes well and we've got that done. What sort of opponent are you looking for? This one just sort of ease your way back in, or just, I don't know. Just whoever they tell me to do. You know what I mean? So we'll deal with all. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come here. Yeah, fair enough. Um, just going back a bit in time. How did you get into boxing originally? Um, I first went to boxing to get, to get a wee bit of discipline. I could get sent there to just uh, teach myself a wee bit of discipline. So just kind of hard and, and enjoyed it. And then um, kind of took it to a duck to water, you know what I mean? Um, then I was out it for a wee while. I turned professional football, a few bad injuries, and went back to boxing. Um, and then turned pro, and that was ever since. It was a bit of a state when Billy, Billy first uh, got hold of me enough, but um, <laughs> we've got to swap to it in the end. Yeah. Um, what football team did you? Play for? Yeah, I played for Dundee United. Oh, okay. How did you find that? I was never a great player, but I, I, I could always <laughs> used to work hard, so that yeah. was it. Oh, fair enough. Um, then, did you like doing the amateurs match, or was it more just...? Um, I, never, I never did a lot of senior fights. I never did a lot of senior fights. Only a handful of senior fights, but um, I had over 50 amateur fights. I only beat once in Scotland. Um, in Scotland, so I went, went to the British, went to last day in Europe, stuff like that. It was, it was, it was, it was good, but as I never got a lot of seniors, I come back for the injury, had a few seniors, and then went straight into pro. Oh, fair enough. Not doing too bad in the pros, anyway. It's alright, it's alright. <laughs> um, where, where do you sort of aim to get back to? Because obviously, like, I think Rocky Fielding today has been confirmed in the world title right, show. Um, I think he's quite deservedly so, Rocky gets that. Um, I, need, I want to win a British title, and I've got a British title on me, no matter what. I've got a long title belt on me, so you can back together and get that sorted. Yeah, fair enough. Um, sort of elsewhere in Scottish boxing, obviously, Josh Taylor's got his sort of fight yeah. against Victor Postle on yeah. 23rd, I think. How do you see that one? Uh, <laughs> I think it will. I don't think anybody's going to stop Josh Taylor at a long time. I think he's a very, very special fighter. I think he's a, he's a great fighter. Um, I can't see much in front of him to a long time. Yeah. I think it was Scotland's next, next world champion. Yeah. Um, speaking of Scotland's world champions, I think Ricky Burns is coming back on Saturday, Saturday as well, yeah. Uh, Newcastle. I sort of didn't see that one coming until uh, later. No. Ricky, um, me and Ricky, we have good friends. I mean, you'll fight until they can't, physically can't fight anymore. You'll fight for peanuts, he would fight anywhere, they would fight anybody. It's just the way it is, he's a fighting man, so, so he's, he's always said if he were close, so, um, that's, uh, that's what I'll do. You'll find the physical kind of thing anymore. Yeah, good stuff. Um, sort of sponsors have been a big help for you, so I'm guessing, during your time yeah. off and just. I've had, um, I've had sponsors come and go all off, and the, the results, you know what I mean? I've got sponsors going to go. I've got, I've got a lot of sponsors here around about a home, hometown, um, 
it's always been there from the start. I've got select lines, I've got uh, the Hearties group, and I've got a lot of, I've got Be Inspired. Um, I've got a lot of ones that's been there from the start, a lot of ones come and go as well with results. So um, I've got a lot of loyal ones as well. So. Good stuff. Well, hopefully we can get a few more after that, all this fight. But um, listen, thank you very much for the interview and best of luck in your, your next fight. Well, thanks very much, Adam. Cheers. Cheers.